Hey everybody, uh, so a couple of users have uh, been asking me questions about mirror alignment and uh, the questions stem from both some confusion and uh, just uh, turning things the wrong way initially when they're attempting these alignments and uh, so I wanted to address some of that here in this video really quick and for that I'm necessarily going to have to take my machine out of alignment uh, to do the explanation, uh, but I'll do the alignment back uh, offline, and uh, this video will just be about the preparations uh, to do before you begin the alignment. So let me grab this other camera here, and uh, let's see, uh, I'm not that modest, you can't see me, so... Let's just hope for the best here. Okay, so first I'm going to show mirror number two here. And uh, so right now I'm, I'm pretty much perfectly aligned, but uh, what I want to talk about is uh, how you initially have these screws when you're initially attempting an alignment. Uh, you need to afford yourself maximum travel uh, on these three screws, and that is uh, you want to be able to go in or out with all three screws. So... Let me put this in a really bad position so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, like the way this mirror is right now is absolutely the way you don't want to begin an alignment. Okay, you don't want it to look tilted like that. You don't want an angle. You want these two surfaces to be parallel. Okay, this is what mostly parallel surfaces look like. Do this one badly as well. Okay, and the reason for not wanting to start out this way is because if you need to tilt back any farther, your screws are already as far back as they're going to go, so you're not going to get much travel. And likewise, if your screws are all the way in and you need to go farther, then you're pretty much out of luck because there's no more room to adjust. So when you're adjusting your mirrors, when, when you're about to adjust your mirrors, I should say, uh, make it so that you have roughly the same amount of thread on the inside as you do on the outside. And another way to put that is to say, have the two kinematic mounting plates, that's the forward plate, that's the back plate, have them parallel to each other. Okay. So that's going to be my starting point there. And if you wanted to really get uh, OCD about it, you could take a pair of cal you know, take a caliper here and measure the gap at one end and the other, and then come to the top and do the same thing. Uh, you know, I don't think that's absolutely necessary. All right, so I haven't totally messed things up there. Uh, well, so let, while I'm in here, let me talk about the adjustments on mirror number two, and then I'll do mirror number one. Uh, when, when you set up your mirror like this, uh, when you're ready to do the alignment, uh, although it may turn out later that you find that you can't translate uh, your mirrors, and by translate I mean you can't, if you've, if you've got a, the adjustment here on mirror number two, you see those slots, that's your translation adjustment. After the beam is adjusted, then is when you translate the mirror left and right so that it moves into the path of that beam. Uh, you're not aiming for the mirror when you're aligning your laser, right? That's what I always say. Uh, so this, this mirror, right, I mean this uh, screw right here is not a screw that you typically want to move once you begin your alignment. It's there for you to, to help you level this thing out, and now you should just lock it. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, that, mirror, that uh, screw can uh, make the diagonal move. And while that is true, it's not what you want it for. Uh, it's there to get you uh, to a level starting point, and you can lock it in. If later it turns out that uh, either mirror number three cannot translate far enough to... Uh, to move in one direction and get in front of the in front of the beam, uh, then what you can do is back out all the screws equally. That is, uh, 
instead of having them right in the mirror in the middle, you can have them uh, a little farther back if you need to move farther to the right. And if you need to, if you've run out of room and need to move farther to the left on number three, you start out with these three screws uh, in more uh, because that shifts the entire beam left and right when those three move in unison. But when you're just starting your alignment, you want to lock this one down. He's not one that you want to move around. Uh, so if you don't know this already, the bottom screw causes the beam to go up and down. When you go, when you turn it clockwise, the beam at mirror number three will move upward. And when you move it counterclockwise, it will move downward. And the reason it does that is because the other two screws are now acting like a hinge. Okay, so this, uh, this in-between screw is part of a hinge with the other pair, whether it's up or down or left or right. Uh, so because this screw uh, causes your mirror to move up and down, by necessity, this other screw on the right, on the left side, uh, causes your your mirror beam to uh, move left and right. It moves to the right when you turn clockwise. It moves to the left when you turn counterclockwise. And it's it's something that's pretty intuitive if you're a visual thinker. But you know, for some of us, uh, we have to like uh, physically see it happen to understand what's what. Okay, so now that I've taken my laser out of alignment there, I think I better put it back together. I was going to talk about mirror number one, which is uh, kind of the reverse of this. In mirror number one, uh, the, uh, the bottom screw, instead of being on the right, it's actually on the left. And then the top uh, left screw is the one that you want to lock down. That's your in-between screw. And then this one is the, the one that you make adjustments to on that side. And one more thing, if I haven't said it before, always use a lower power when you're when you're uh, doing the alignment, so that you don't immediately burn a hole in the paper that you're using to do your do your alignment. And that's just it's a practical measure because it helps you to see where the beam is hitting rather than shooting through a hole that you may or may not be able to register properly. Uh, I don't even know where that's hitting. Could be the power is too low. Let me show you what I'm seeing here. Okay, I'm going to turn the power up to 8.6. It was at 8.0. Oh, there it is. Too much power. So yeah, I only want enough power to basically uh, brown the paper. There you can see the dot forming. That one there. All right, and it's uh, right on the right on the edge there. Uh, intend for this to become another alignment video. We've got the others uh, that are there for that. I just wanted to explain those things about about the preparations of uh, getting your mirrors squared away. So I'll just end the video here and get back to aligning my laser. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you like it, like it. If you hate it, hate it. Click to subscribe. Thanks.